Okay, so let's go through how you can use PyTorch to fit an ordinary regression model. So uh, this is my CoLab notebook. I have, um, I'm going to import pandas and PyTorch and uh, stats models uh, formula API, which I'm importing as SMF, is just a, um, um, a model formulation of stats models that allows you to use R type formulas for fitting linear models and logistic models, logistic regression models. So I'm also going to import stat models. Uh, I don't know if that's necessary. Uh, Seaborn is a plotting library, and then Matplotlib is a very general plotting library. So I'm going to download the data. This uh, I'm going to just w get it from this uh, GitHub account. However, um, you know when you wind up running code over and over again in a notebook. Uh, you, uh, it adds a, a little one and re-downloads the file. So I just have this little bash script that says, if the file doesn't exist, then get it. Otherwise, don't do it. Okay. And then this reads it in. This is just pandas read, dot, read underscore CSV. And then this is just the method associated with the data that's going to print out the first four rows. Okay. Let's run it. There it is, first four rows. So these are voxel level data. So these are all MRI images of different sorts. So flare is a, a, a fluid retention, uh, a fluid attenuated um, version of imaging. PD is proton density. T1, T2 are uh, two kind of main MRI imaging sorts. And then um, these are smooth versions of the images. So these are just individual voxels from a subject that had all these imaging types. And let's imagine that we want to build up a model uh, using T2 to predict proton density. And the reason being that maybe, you know, for a different subject that doesn't have T2, we want to be able to predict their proton density. So obviously you'd want to do this with more than one subject. This is all from Elizabeth Sweeney's R package, uh, Oasis, which um, does exactly things like that. Um, using more advanced methods, of course, than just simple linear regression. Okay, so um, here's a scatter plot of the T2 and proton density. So T2 on the horizontal axis and our outcome proton density on the vertical axis. And it looks fairly linear for these 100 measurements. So let's try and fit a line. So we're going to fit ordinary least squares. So that's stats models formulas. And then it allows this nice R formulation for... Um, uh, for specifying the model, proton density is the outcome, and T2 as the predictor. The data set is DAT, and then I'm going to use the method fit associated with it. And then uh, I'm going to, uh, uh, so this, this fit is the variable outcome, and this is the method. Okay, and then uh, for my outcome of the model fit, I am then going to get, get the summary. Okay. And so when I do that, I see, you know, it gives all the normal statistics output, but in it, you know, specifically here's my two coefficients, just kind of store these two numbers, the intercepts, intercepts about 0.31 and the T2 coefficient, the coefficient uh, in front of the regressor is about 0.78. Okay. So commit those to memory and let's plunge forward. Okay. So um, here I'm just plotting the uh, predicted values. Uh, versus the actual values. So this is the proton density versus the y hat on the horizontal axis. And then uh, this line here is an identity line. Okay. So that's the normal way you would do this. Let's see how we would do this in PyTorch. Now you would not use a gradient descent optimization routine to fit uh, ordinary least squares, because we already know the formulas for ordinary least squares. We know the fastest way to get at the coefficients. So it's totally unnecessary, but I think it's useful for understanding what PyTorch is doing. Okay, so let's get the data in the format available uh, that PyTorch wants. First, let me just define the number of observations. And uh, this, this is 100, but uh, I'm just going to grab it from the data set as the number of rows. And then I'm going to go uh, use, uh, for my x variable, I'm going to do from NumPy, uh, the torch, uh, PyTorch um, um, function from NumPy. And um, I'm going to pull the T2 and then the, the specifically you have to do values. Otherwise, get the whole object. 
Okay, and then Y training, I'm going to do the same thing. And I want, again, the values, not the whole object with all its attributes. And then um, there's a little bit of type conversion issue going on. So you, you have to just make sure to specify that they're floats. And that's what PyTorch wants. Okay, and then there's another small problem that it turns out the dimension winds up being 1 by n when I did this instead of n by 1. So uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, PyTorch has a method called unsqueeze. Uh, for their um, tensor objects. So take the method unsqueeze, we're going to unsqueeze the second dimension that converts it into an n by one instead of a one by n. Okay, so just to double check, because this is a little bit uh, frustrating, uh, let's get print out the shape of x, the shape of y, and then the n and, you know, n and one, just to make sure they all agree. And then you see down here that they all agree, uh, 100 and one, 100 by 1 for x, 100 by 1 for y, and 100 by 1 as the thing that we want. OK, now let's specify the model. So we're going to use a standard neural network sequential model. And normally when you do this, you have a bunch of lines where you put in uh, layer after layer. Um, but we're not going to do that because we're going to do linear regression. So we're going to do a linear layer and it's going to be the output layer because our only layer is going to be this one. And we're just going to have one input and one output. I wonder if the pen works. So our model is just, we have a plus one, and then we have um, T2, and then we have proton density. And then that's it. That's our model uh, where we have a linear activation function. Okay, so um, then we need a loss function. Uh, you know, we're doing least squares, so our, our loss function is mean squared error. That means that our loss function will look something like this, summation yi minus yi hat squared, right, which is least squares, um, where our yi hat is going to be coming about from that model given by that diagram. Um, Reduction equals sum is, is is talking about this part here. How do we go? <clears throat> how do we reduce the um, how do we reduce the model across the rows of the data or the observations? And then optimizer here, I'm going to set my optimizer as stochastic gradient descent, and I'm going to set the learning rate as one uh, to uh, ten to the negative fourth. The uh, the learning rate. Remember when we talked about gradient descent about moving along the derivative a certain amount. So the learning rate is that amount. It's that epsilon. So our new parameter is going to be our old parameter minus the learning rate times the derivative. OK, so PyTorch wants you to actually program the looping that you're going to do. So now I'm going to do 10,000 iterations. And I'm going to go uh, first, I'm going to forward propagate through the model. And PyTorch does pick some starting values for you, but you can set them if you'd like. OK, um, but for right now, let's just take the default starting values. And then so it's going to do a model of the X training. That just means take the model and propagate my T2 and you know bias term, propagate it with the current weights, which are um, the initialization weights that PyTorch is picking propagate them through the model to get y hats. Then from that, we're going to get a loss. And then um, uh, this step here, it, oh, and here, if you want, you can print. Let's actually do this. Oh, no, I don't want to do that because there's 10,000 of them. You can you know, pick a, a rate at which you want to print out the, the, what the loss currently is at. Um, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for this example. Um, so uh, it, 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 when it does back propagation, which is uh, calculating the gradients backwards through the network, it's going to add them up. So first thing you want to do is make sure to zero out the gradients so that as it cumulatively adds them up, you know, it's adding them up correctly, starting at zero. And then you actually do the back propagation with loss dot backward. And then you do the stochastic gradient step, which is take the parameters and add the um, uh, subtract the learning rate times the 
the gradient. Okay, so let's run this. So it takes it a minute. Um, so that's you know way longer than it than than you know it's it's still quite fast, but this is way longer than it should take for something like this that you know it should be nearly instantaneous for for something like uh, linear regression. But again, we're just doing it to show you that um, we're in essence using a bazooka to kill a fly in this case, and that we're using this ama you know amazingly complex and rich uh, optimization and tensor library to fit what is effectively a correlation. Okay, so let's check, test our, our uh, fitted in-sample uh, predictions. Now remember up there when we plotted our predictions, I didn't say this, but I should have, we were plotting our in-sample predictions, which means we're plotting the, the predictions on the data that we use to train the model, which isn't great machine learning practice, but with 100 observation and a model with two parameters, I think we're probably fine. Um, and more than anything, we're just showing that numerically this is the same. Uh, we're not trying to actually predict a new proton density value for a new image or something like that. If we were doing that and we have multiple subjects, we'd need to be a lot more careful about these sorts of things. Okay, so we're going to do just exactly on the training data, we're going to do predictions. So what's nice in PyTorch is if you want the prediction, you can just do model of the training set. And of course, um, actually, uh, why PRID? Uh, up here is exactly already this because it, when it did it through the algorithm, it's maybe just one iteration behind. But you know, in ten thousand iterations or whatever it went through, that's irrelevant. But let's you know, um, let's get that final iteration. So here's we're propagating the X training data through the model, the final fitted model from PyTorch, and then these these commands uh, simply. Um, reformat from a PyTorch format into what you need for Seaborn to plot it. Um, again, the the um, you know it's detaching all of the, some of the kind of meta information that come from it being a PyTorch tensor. NumPy converts it to a, a NumPy object, and then again, it's another one of these frustrating things where it's the wrong uh, shape. So we're going to reshape uh, minus one. And then um, here's my scatter plot, and then uh, here's my identity line. So I run that, and then you can see it falls exactly along the identity line. In other words, that the predictions, in sample predictions that we're getting from PyTorch in this optimization routine are identical to the predictions we got using the stats models ordinary least squares function. Okay, if we want to print out the, we want to print out the actual parameters. I'm going to just go loop through the model parameters and print them. And it's 0.78 and 0.31. They're in a different order, but those are the same, roughly the same as, as the other ones. Okay, uh, next we'll go through a simple logistic regression version of this. And then after that, we're, um, we're gonna start building up networks with a lot more layers and a lot more inputs.